Greetings, this is Dr. Derek Wong with the continuation series of uh, the um, Smart PLS usage for um, research analysis. And now, the subject of goodness of fit in this continuing video uh, is still in its infancy stages, although uh, Hanseler and uh, a few others have mentioned that there are certain uh, values that you can use for goodness of fit. The first one I'm going to uh, tell you, uh, share with you, is the standardized root mean <coughs> uh, residuals, which is the difference between the observed correlation and the model implied in correlation matrix. Uh, this is actually the average magnitude of the discrepancies between the observed and expected correlation as an absolute measure of the fit criteria, which means how well does your data actually fit the model. So the cutoff points uh, here is between 0 0.1 or in some more conservative 0 0.08, as uh, explained by the um, Henseler and Huynh Bentler for normal PLS. But unless, of course, uh, if you're using uh, consistent PLS, then use the consistent testing model because the residues are also model when the theory is strong, uh, whether your data fits the uh, whether your data fits the model or not. So it really depends. Uh, of course, in this case, I would advise you to stick with the easier one, which is just use the normal PLS for exploratory modeling if you're using that. The other one that uh, Bentler and Bonnet uh, suggested is to use the norm fit index or the NFI. Uh, you can pause the video to read some of the uh, things in this slide, which uh, was taken off from the um, uh, website of uh, Smart PLS. However, uh, as you can see here, the NFI represents an incremental fit measure as such major disadvantage is that it does not penalize for model complexity because as the model gets larger, uh, the NFI is supposed to get better. It is just for this reason that sometimes the NFI is not recommended if your model is a little bit too simple and uh, that is why they suggest to use the uh, non-norm non fit index or the Tucker-Lewis index, but uh, unfortunately the uh, Tucker-Lewis has not yet been implemented in Smart PLS. Finally, you can also look at the RMS data, which is the root mean square residual covariance matrix or the outer model, which measures uh, the useful to ex assess the purely reflective models. Uh, of course, if you have um, reflective and formative, then this may not work, you know, because formative measures are not that meaningful. So they suggest that if you have a fully reflective model, then the RMS data values below 0 0.12 indicate a well-fitting model, uh, whereas higher values indicate lack fit. So just to show you how this works, I'm going to use back this model of the uh, Smart PLS and uh, we're going to calculate the PLS algorithm and you can look at the model fit under the quality criteria whereby if you look at the SRMR uh, the estimated model seems a little bit high on the 0 0.083 side uh, however it is still within the 0 0.1 if you use the less conservative method uh, if you look at the NFI, the NFI is not above the 0 0.9, which is suggested. Uh, therefore, like I said, no, the NFI is not that good. Uh, but if you do get a number of above 0 0.9, then it's good for you to report it. And finally, we have the RMS data, which is less than 0 0.9. 1, 2, just double check, yes it is. So you can also report the RMS data if let's say you want to report fit values. So that is all for now for the fit values. So thank you very much for watching.